in what could have easily been one of the most upsetting videos on the Great Outdoors channel, we were able to find some light at the end of the tunnel. Remember that baby three-line mud turtle we found? Well, I have some good news to report on. Be sure to subscribe. Welcome to the Great Outdoors. Every day we're faced with decisions. Some easy, some tough. And sometimes you have to go out of your way to make the right decision. But in the long run, it always pays off. This is an adult three-line mud turtle. We found this guy trying to cross the road. So we went ahead and picked him up. It was a rainy day. We went out in the rain and got this guy. I wanted to return him closer to a creek where he could call home in order to keep him off the road and the highway so he could continue to travel downstream and reproduce and continue his species on. Everybody remember that egg we found? And I promised I would try my best to save it or incubate it? Well, my friends, we have successfully incubated this three-line mud turtle egg, but I can't seem to find him anywhere in this enclosure. Now, the process to which we incubated this egg is putting him into a climate-controlled room at exactly 81 degrees Fahrenheit. Never attempt to open an egg prematurely. They will hatch. They know the exact time to which they need to hatch. This is the first video or the exact moment I spotted this baby three-line mud turtle. It had already burrowed. These guys can hold their breath for a long period of time. I wanted to give this turtle a head start on life by ensuring his incubation process was flawless. This meant special care was given to the turtle egg in order to ensure its survival. First and foremost, most important thing when incubating a reptile or any egg for that matter is humidity. You don't want to have a dry environment that can cause the egg to shrivel up. And two weeks later, this cute baby turtle hatched. So we took a trip to the pet store and bought some supplies to give him the proper environment he needs to develop into a toddler. Now when this baby hatched, his umbilical cord was still attached. I didn't realize that these babies actually carry their umbilical cord for several days before it actually falls off. He seemed to be happy in this enclosure. We gave him a sunning deck, a gravel bottom, and current created from an overhead filter. But that wasn't good enough. I felt like this didn't replicate his natural environment enough. So I added some floating lily pads and plants and of course little fish for him to either feed on or just coexist with. But still felt like there was something else this aquarium needed. So we added some tadpoles and snails. Now snails are real important in the ecosystem. They actually are food for the turtle and snails are excellent scrubbers helping clean the algae from the tank. We then added a few plants that were epiphytic, that way they would be able to grow without much soil. With just a small clump of soil wrapped around moss and a few ferns, the plants would be fine. Now, if you look closely, he's already found his way underneath some of these lily pads. Turtles get their vitamin D from light, it's real important, so I put this tank right in the window, as well as created an overhead lamp to get the temperatures on the sunning deck to around 91 degrees Fahrenheit. Within a week, algae started to grow. You can see this snail feasting on the algae that's already growing on the side of the tank. These snails are much too big for this turtle to take on, and their shell is probably too hard. But, I hope that these snails will actually reproduce in his tank. He seems to be doing great here, and seems to move around quite a bit. But sometimes he just lays dormant like a bump on a log. And other times he's scoping out the tank. Now. I told you I added tadpoles to his tank, which one of the most amazing things I found is that these tadpoles already started developing legs. And believe it or not, one of these tadpoles has already emerged from the water and begun its life process as a baby frog or a toad. My suspicion is this is a baby toad. However, I felt like there was one thing this aquarium still needed, actually a vital food source for this species of turtle. Yes, you guessed it, duckweed. Now duckweed can be considered a nuisance in a lot of ponds, but actually it's really healthy for the turtle to eat it and it actually helps add to the biodiversity of that ecosystem he lives in and help give him more life experience. And life experience is very important for this baby turtle because I plan on releasing him back into the wild just a little while after I do maybe a few more videos and help him get a good start on life. I want to thank everyone who commented or suggested a name for this little turtle. 
I decided to go with the name Lucky. It's just so fitting. Thank you, Ocean Redux, for your suggestion. Well, there's only two things left to do. We have to add the duckweed to this turtle's environment so he can start to try it out and see if he likes it. And that baby frog that we found in our aquarium, we need to go ahead and let this guy go back into the pond that we built and establish an ecosystem right here in my yard. We just got done picking up another animal trying to cross the road. I'm gonna go ahead and relocate him to a pond nearby, uh, trying to cross the main highway. Oh, it's so sad to see this damn dead. Once again, found another turtle. We're having a little 441. When I was a child, I remember my father finding a yellow rat snake in our birdhouse. He told me about the circle of life, and through time I learned about the balance of our ecosystems. Every day a new adventure, a new creature, shows like the crocodile hunter. It became my goal to catch every species of animal possible. Then YouTube came along and gave me a platform. Now I can share with my subscribers. Thanks for your support, it means a lot to me, the Florida wildlife guy.